Hey, it's a Draft House Diary for Tuesday, June 13th, 2023, when I came out here to the Sloan's Lake Alamo Draft House to see Transformers Rise of the Beasts. Now, again, it's hard to talk about a movie like this without talking about other movies in the series. I can't say a whole lot about those, though, because I saw the first Transformers movie, and it was a mess. Not impressed with it. I saw the second Transformers movie, and it was better. Not perfect by any means, but better. And I haven't seen any since, even though I heard pretty good things about Bumblebee. Well, this movie is considered really a, a standalone sequel to Bumblebee. And this movie worked pretty well. It's set in, well, the beginning is set, I gather, thousands of years ago out in outer space when Unicron was destroying the homeworld of the Maximals, the giant robotic animal type creatures, the animal equivalent of the Transformers. And they were taking the, the MacGuffin key away from Unicron and hiding it somewhere else, of course. They wind up hiding it on Earth. But most of the movie takes place in, well, it takes place on Earth in 1994, which I think they could have done a better job of making clear in the uh, in the movie. I've talked about how some movies are very clumsy about letting you know where and when and they're set. I think this could have been a little more clear. But the story worked. We have... Uh, an overall theme about working together as opposed to protecting just your own interests, because we have the Autobots, we have the Maximals, who are living in the jungles of Peru, and we have some humans, and the three of them, the three groups, have to learn to work together to defeat the great giant planet-destroying evil, which is going to come here thanks to the fact that this key, this MacGuffin, has been discovered. It's a pretty straightforward story, but it's got enough twists, enough interesting action beats that you're pulled from one to the other fairly well. And compared to earlier Transformers movies, I thought the action in this was blocked and shot much, much better. One of the big problems with the first Transformers movie was that the action scenes were just a confusing mess. Here, there was a much better sense of spatial geography and knowing who's doing what in relation to whom and understanding what the lay of the land is in the battlefield and the other parts of the the action. It was especially complicated towards the end, but they held it together pretty well. And it also worked together pretty well in the rest of the uh, the action scenes. Was this brilliant, groundbreaking cinema? No. Was it a fun action movie? Yes, and I'd probably take a chance on a sequel if they make another one with some of the same people working in it. And there's some fun tie-ins to other franchises and other properties, too, but I won't give much of that away. Other parts of my visit to the Alamo. Unfortunately, I wasn't here for most of the pre-show. I missed about half of the pre-show. But I don't think I missed that much because what I saw was almost all ads for toys related to the Maximal, the, the, the animal creatures. I think they were called Beast Wars. Lots and lots of ads for that. Japanese anime opening and closing for the anime based on that. A long sequence that seemed to be an ad for a theme park, but it wasn't in English, but it involved a little kid dressed as a cowboy singing and dancing with a Bumblebee Transformers robot. Very trippy. One thing I kind of wished they had had was a previously on. Now, maybe they had that at the beginning of the pre-show, uh, and I missed it, but usually that's well towards the end of the pre-show, those previously ons, and uh, we didn't get one. So I hope... Well, it, I, I enjoyed this movie. I wonder if there were was anything that I would have picked up, any Easter eggs that I would have noticed had I seen Bumblebee. Maybe I'll give Bumblebee a try, because like I say, I've I've heard decent things about it. And you know, if it if it was comparable to this, I'd say it's it's a worthwhile movie. 
I did get some food. I got the Caesar salad with grilled chicken. And I've had that before, and it's very good. And compared to the way those Caesar salads are served some places, it's fairly light. It's not that high in calories. It's not that overwhelming. It's not a huge portion, but it is just right, and it's very satisfying. So it's a great option if the burgers and fried chicken and other things that the Alamo has aren't what you're looking for on a given visit. But that's all for this Draft House Diary. If you found this useful, go ahead and click the like button down below. And if you want future Draft House Diaries, click that subscribe button. But most important, thank you very much for watching. I'll be back with more reviews in the future. In the meantime, enjoy your movies. And when you do, stay till the end of the credits.